has been around for ages. Predictive analytics we've been using for a really long time. What's exciting is just like the me and my little world as an individual can play with this tool and can build something new. It's assistance in support of uh, creativity, but the creativity uh, will always be uh, the, uh, the human creativity by humans, uh, but not by, uh, by your machine. Uh, so it, uh, it provides you ideas uh, to be creative or to try just uh, to dare and, and try to do something. So it's magic. We don't want to have a theoretical or conceptual view on generative AI in education. We want to have a um, reality-driven and impact-driven um, approach. This is why we started by engaging 1,000 champions. We trained them, we gave them access, and we also charged them with the responsibility to explore and to test things and to come back with the results of their experiments. Because it was super important for us that what we are going to be designing is, let's say, based on experiences and real life experiences at ESCP. Given our school environment, the student's body that we have, and also the prof that we have. I'm very, very proud, I would say, uh, that we, we, we are uh, stimulating or student, boosting uh, everyone, students, but also, of course, uh, professors, uh, administrative staff, uh, and everyone to use it, uh, because we have so uh, functionalities, uh, we so many opportunities uh, using it. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, no, that's great. Uh, next step, uh, it will be to develop new cases, uh, because uh, I have developed already some cases, but I'm sure that I can develop uh, new cases, uh, and, of course, uh, uh, follow the evolution evolution of uh, ChatGPT. Uh, I don't know what they are doing now and what will be available in the next uh, month, but uh, we will see uh, and then we will use uh, also these uh, new uh, uh, functionalities. We will discuss, uh, of course, uh, how we, uh, or experience, uh, how we use it uh, um, and, uh, and this is uh, the way we, we are doing. We have some workshop uh, all together and we discover, uh, once again, new possibilities to use uh, uh, the uh, generative AI, which is, uh, which is great because uh, it provides uh, uh, ideas and then uh, you think, oh yeah, oh I could do this, okay, for my teaching but also for my research, for everything. What I take away is just this opportunity to, to really make our relationship with these support documents and information resources that we have at our school so much more interactive and accessible to the entire ESCP community. I would love to integrate GPT to my email so that I can just automatically review all of my emails in French. And I'm looking forward to have, you know, an automated process that allows us to, as I mentioned, have, you know, content that enters in, in one, you know, entry point and it automatically passes through several custom GPT, you know, adapted to their specific use cases. And then you have this beautiful piece of content that comes out at the end. And I think the next phase is just looking at how my specific project integrates with the other projects going on at the school and the opportunities we have to, to automate. The VitorBot, the avatar, already exists. It will be out uh, next semester. And yes, it's already there. Um, the challenge now is to make it more um, knowledgeable about those topics that I'm gonna teach in the next semester. I'm just writing the script, um, the prompt, making it a little bit less robotic because there's a limitation, right? But still, uh, this is the next step for sure. The Vitor bot, the interactive avatar. And the next stage here will be my video avatar, interactive video avatar. So the students will access it and talk to me without talking to me <laughs> per se. I'm super into you know Marvel and, and DC universe since forever, since kid. And uh, the idea of being or becoming the Iron Man and having your personal um, Jarvis, right? So your assistant is super cool. So that's why I started to creating this, this um, Ember first, let's say, step of my, my project. I think schools in general, whether we're talking about elementary, middle, high school, 
colleges, universities, we have a responsibility to be open to technical evolution. I mean, ESCP was founded in 1819. We are the world's oldest business school. I feel like if we weren't on board for, you know, testing things, we would not still be where we are today. So I think it's natural that ESCP does that, but we also have a responsibility as business schools to do is to use the technology, understand the technology, and then challenge it. This year was about using generative AI in education. So training people, coaching them, making experiments about using the technology. Next year will be more about teaching and researching in a world where generative AI is widely available. The difference between the two is that the first one is more about understanding the technology. The second one is about how to engage with the technology for a bigger, let's say, impact, which is education. We are just scratching the surface. I kind of feel that we are in that moment where the technology is just emerging and we don't know yet exactly how it will uncover and unfold. So I think for us, it's super important that we, of course, engage with the technology very concretely, but also that we, that we stay alert about how do the use case unfold. These are just a few examples of how ESCP is embedding AI across its community in teaching, learning, research and operations. Next, we're scaling up. By the start of the next academic year, we're going to make sure that the technology is accessible across our community, where it brings value. We are comfortable to know if to use AI and how to use AI. We're going to make sure that everyone is trained up and feel comfortable to use it in a responsible and ethical way.